through. Let's check it out. Morning guys, my name's Morgs Brew. Today we're gonna service our ramp pump and I'm gonna take you along with that journey. But before we go do that, it's breakfast time here in the farm, nine o'clock, and we are gonna smash us a good, healthy, wholesome breakfast, and then we're gonna go out and service my ramp pump. Rob's normally with me on these things, but Rob's got uh, Friday is a work day for him in Oslo Beach, so he's checked up out there to go and do some painting. We're getting rain around here at the moment, so he's checked the gap in the weather, and he reckon he can get some painting done today, and. Uh, it's a good day's work for him, so he's gone off to that, but we basically, we moved this ramp pump from its previous sightings, which you can find linked up there, and we got it set up in this new site. We spent quite a bit of time on two of the aspects of it, and we haven't quite finished it, which is something I'll talk about while I'm down there. But I'm quite happy with the results so far. We've been getting a consistent 1,200 liters a day coming up the hill. Gallons, that's like, I don't know, maybe 800, 300 gallons, maybe, something like that, roughly 300 gallons. I don't know, guys, you bloody Americans need to sort your shit out and get in the metric scale where things are divisible by 10, man. Anyways, guys, today's video is going to be about that ramp pump and the system that I've got set up. So let me just uh, smash out some B-roll, breakfast time, and then we'll get to that pumping system. <laughs> So basically the way this works is we take some of this, we take a couple of slices of those, we chop them up, we add the mahil and we blend them with the stick blender. What we end up with is a very, very healthy, fresh, fruity, probiotic breakfast. Join me in the process, let's make that quick. Trusty handcrafted casarina spoon. Okay, we're good to mix up. This one's a strong one. We add it in there, roughly to the level of the top of your fruit. Add in some uh, freshly ground, dried up moringa powder. Slow down, yeah. Just enjoy the tranquility of rolling through the forest. So this road got uh, pretty seriously damaged, as you can see. I'm straddling over this rat over here, which we filled up a bit, but haven't properly fixed it yet. This was from that storm we had uh, in April, where we had just under 700 millimeters of rain in 48 hours.
Hey guys, welcome. About a year ago, I made a video from about here. So let me carry on with that idea with a bit of a better setup and I'll take you guys along for the ride. If you didn't see that video, here it is. Now in the previous video about my ramp pump, we started off in this area over here. My inflow to the dam used to be my primary uh, water drive for the pump. Uh, this water that's coming in here is coming off from the main road and it is moving its way into the dam into here and then we have the spillway. So coming out here, it's a bit overgrown and things at the moment. We need to get a machine down here and open it up. But we opened up this path over here and for now that's good enough. Um, so the ramp pump basically comes in a few sections and I think the most important section of all is going to be your sighting. How do you sight out the location for the pump? For me, I used a combination of my uh, phone's GPS, a theodolite and contours which I have from photogrammetry uh, drone imagery on my farm. I try to make sure that I had at least four to five meters of head and within a, a reasonable kind of terrain so that you can run your pipe from your water source to the to the ram. Because I have a long distance from my source water to my ram, I have to have a standpipe. Originally my pump was, was a small one, it was a 25 mil pump and it was set up in the bottom over here. But now we're going to head off into the push and go check out where the new ram is. But uh, I'll start off here at the weir that Rob and I set up. So this is our low patch that we put in. Uh, the first bit of water would move through this pipe over here. Which looks like it's a bit blocked up. There we go. And then when that, that gets saturated, it then moves down over this. And when it really gets over full, it's going to come over the rest, of the rest of the wall. We just had a bit of rain last night, so you won't really see in here nicely, nicely. But underneath there, down here, I've got a 25 litre drum with a bunch of holes drilled in it. And it goes around a pipe that comes up here into a T. And from that T, it goes into a four inch or 100 mil pipe that comes through our wall as our primary water intake for the ram. And this is a pretty good filter. Uh, not very much goes in there, except for the odd spider. I mean, if you don't have a aversion to spiders, you should be okay. So, the way this is set up, we built these little towers here, just to sit it in. Put a whole lot of wire and things inside these rocks, just locally from the source here. And it comes down over the towers that we put in. This is all perfectly out and leveled out, so we know we're going downhill at a gradient of, I think it was one in a hundred. And at that point there is where it all goes pear-shaped and from there till here you never want to see on a ramp pump especially here what i'm plan on doing is putting an air relief valve over there if we can't um, manage to get this thing out leveled but for now this seems to be working what you'll find is you'll end up with air pockets in your supply line and you'll hear those air pockets when you come along and give it a tap but i can feel this is heavy and full when you run into one of those air pockets, from my experience, the only way to get rid of it is to shake it out the line. <laughs> and not worth doing every day. There she beats. The beating heart of our water system. So there's enough shake to just kick that camera a little bit, but what you can see is that this thing is fuss. Now that we got the ramp pump cycling over there, I just want to go through a couple of things that uh, impress me about the system. And that's going to be the pressure, the charging pressure that we can get to. And what it looks like when you release that. So I've got a release valve on my pressure tank so that I can release the pressure and drain it. That 
helps me out when it comes to servicing. Um, if you want to move it, you, you don't want it to be full of water. And every now and then it's good to just get it all out, get some fresh air back in there. Other way of introducing air into my pressure chambers, I use what's called a snifter valve. And the snifter valve is this little hole that you drill just underneath the one-way valve that takes you into your pressure chamber. And that allows you to get a little suction of air in between each cycle so that air gets into your chamber and it's the compressible section of your system which allows you to drive this water up the hill. The basic physics of a ram pump are you have your drive pipe which comes in here. We've gone from a 50 mil drive pipe into a 4 inch system. And the reason for doing that is just to slow the velocity of the water down before it exits here. The, the, the larger the volume of water that exits at a time, the greater the drive pressure generated will be. Um, we use steel pipe going up our drive pipe, which has been stabilized by two towers. Uh, steel is because it's inflexible and when that hammer runs back up the pipe, it's moving at about a thousand meters a second, 1,100 or so. But if you've got PVC here, you get this bulging. Uh, when that hammer hits, your system isn't as efficient if you're using PVC. So I've gone for a full steel system. I will strip this right apart and show you guys each component of the system. We got it fixed to a concrete slab over here, which we poured. Um, and we got a runoff water just going into a sort of furrow which drains back through all of this marshland back into the river system that we started at. So what's happening in the cycle is as that closes, it creates sort of like an energy deficit just below it over here. And that's why you see that valve spring back down again. And as that springs back down, that energy deficit is forcing water or forcing pressure to find somewhere else to go. And that is up here. So it goes up here and then as that equalizes again, the water will start to flow back out. This one will close. That flow will drive this to shut and it'll go duck, duck, duck. And that's what it does. It does this 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And as long as you have your reliability, it's good. Basically, the way this guide was designed, which hasn't worked out entirely, because what I found was the, the metal on metal seal and anise here, even though it's seated, wasn't, wasn't completely fitting. So it wasn't sealing shut, and you were getting this squirt of water that was coming out and it was really affecting our efficiencies. So I went and got this machine built, but it turns out that, or well, it seems that every few months we've got to change this out. Because what starts to happen is it splits. So today we're just going to change out this machine belt and hook this guy up again. But what we end up with is this sort of an effect. Thing here, and your constant, that's your valve. This is the one one way, and the other one way valve is inside here. And all it is is a plate with a piece of machine belt on top of it that a bunch of holes are underneath so that water can come up through it but it can't go back down through it. of a flowing system it can't be damp fed because because this thing is free and is free energy it's not it's, it's free electricity it's free of electricity but it uses water to drive it so it costs water not power or not electricity 
That's why a dam wouldn't work out unless you have a high inflow. But if you have a high inflow into your dam, you might as well tap into that. What I've done is I've come to my spillway. We've weird up our spillway so that we get a little pocket. We put a 100 mil pipe into that. We've run that 100 mil pipe at a 1 in 100 gradient um, down the first 18, 6, 12, 18, 18 meters. And then from there, because this is part of the old system, we've connected in a 63 mil HDP pipe and that runs for 70 meters through the bush and it gets to our standpipe. If you have a, a long distance from your weir to your drive pipe, you need to include a standpipe and that sort of moves your head. It's what you would refer to as a static head. Um, so my static head is right up there just before the pump or just before my drive pipe, which is a 12 meter length of galvanized 50 mil pipe or two inch pipe. That Galvanized pipe gives me a lot of durability and a lot of and it's robust. This gives me characteristics that I want to use within my RAM because I'm trying to run this as low, low flow, low impact with all my energy being sent uphill. And that's why the steel works out nicely for that. We normally have our uh, RAM pump water system coming in through the top of these Jojos, but as you can hear right now, well, they got cool. This is full, full, full. And I've got these two plumbed up here on a sand bed. Um, plumbed up in series and they're going down into my system. We still haven't gotten to the drip irrigation setup, but since I cranked up the ramp pump, I'm flipping impressed with that outflow. Let's uh, give it a quick measure. We're going to use this uh, measuring jug over here. Gonna measure up to a litre, which is the second line from the top, and time how many seconds that takes, work it out per minute, times about 1440, get litres per day. Oh. Here we are. But thank you guys, thank you for joining me on this little adventure that we went on through the farm and a little exploration of my system, my ramp pump that I've got set up. Like I said earlier, if you like the content, subscribe, hit the like button while you're at it. The more likes, the better. And I will see you guys back here next week for another update on this system and a brew. Oh wait.